Hi and welcome to Miss Daisy Patterns. Today we're going to make a sock line. Right, so to get straight into it, what we'll need is some craft filler, one sock, some chunky yarn, some pieces of felt, white thread, embroidery thread, marker, scissors and some needles and pins. Now, to begin with, we'll start with the sock and we need to cut it up into a few different areas. So we're going to cut along this section first. Snipping it out really quickly. And turning it inside out, laying it flat. That part is going to be used for the main body. Now the next section we're going to do is we're going to take out the heel completely. So again, we're snipping it out really quickly. And that is what is going to make the lion's nose. Now at this point, we cut off this section and we leave it aside. We don't actually need that at all. Now the following bit we need now is we need the lion's tail and two ears. So I'm going to make it out of this section. So literally we cut this entire piece in half. One section is going to be the tail and the next section again in half and it's going to be the two ears. So that's ear one, ear two. Next taking our Sharpie. Now in this I'm using a green Sharpie which is actually quite bright um, but I'm only doing that for purposes of the video so if you want to use something that's a little less you know intrusive into the fabric um, and what I've outlined there is I've outlined just the, the end of the lion's legs and at this point now I'm outlining the two ears. So obviously we're going to leave the base of the ear open. Now, next thing we do is needle and thread. I like to double the thread and put a knot at the end. And working my way in, I'm going to do a back stitch. And I like to do nice small back stitches all the way around. And at this point, right just between the legs um, is where I stop because I need to leave that gap there. I need to leave the gap between there and there. And I'm going to start on the second point knot and thread, do a back stitch to begin with and stitch it all the way down. I always like to do a couple of stitches over each other at the end just to make sure it's nice and secure and snipping it off and leaving it to the side. Now the next thing I need to do is, is literally cut off the excess sections of the sock. Now I'm cutting up the middle as well. Right. Just checking to make sure the hole is big enough and we turn the sock inside out making sure the legs are popped out as well and that pretty much is your main body of the line sorted the next step we're going to do is we're going to be stuffing him now it will take a lot of stuffing so don't be a bit surprised at that um, i always like to tease the stuffing out like that um, and gently fill all of the edges and then generally fill the legs top legs and then I start filling the middle and it will take a lot of maneuvering to make sure you've got the right shape so this does take a little bit of a while um, and the next step to do is you need to sew up that final section here I'm just using a regular whip stitch to stitch it together now all of these, um, the, I'll leave a link to how you make all these stitches below in the video and um, we have tutorials on the website for all the stitches. Now this section is for the ears and what I'm doing here again is a back stitch, back stitching it all the way around. Snipping it off, um, trimming off any excess sock that we don't need. ear one done and by the magic of camera ear two is also done all right so this is what, what what i'm going to do now is i'm just popping them on either side of the head left and right hand side of the head what i usually like to do is i just start to thread pull the thread through knot on the inside and then gently turn up 
the base of the ear inside itself. And I'm basically whip stitching this in place. So whip stitching it to the side of the head. Now, this does take a lot of maneuvering again of moving it back and forward um, so that you can actually get the ear stitched all the way around. And finally, what we're going to do then just to finish off the face area is I'm going to be putting in the nose. And that's where the heel comes into play. So folding over, center it up, folding it over, putting a knot through and then attaching it pretty much to the center point of the face and whip stitching in place. Again, this can be a little bit finicky, so just take your time with it and folding in as you're going around so as that the you have a nice clean edge on the actual nose snout area per se. Now as you're working all the way around you're going to get to that at the very top point right there. Um, I'm going to stuff it. Uh, that's just to make sure that there's a we have a good big nose on the lion. So at this point now I have a little area left and I take some of the craft filler. Now not too much, you can judge yourself what size you want the nose to be and then just finishing off the whip stitch. Folding under, whip stitching closed sure everything's nice and secure. I like to go over where I've stitched a few times and then just pulling the thread through and out and snipping it off. And so that's the nose in place. Again I like to fluff it as I'm going. Now the pattern for the eyes and the nose and the little eye pupils is all online um, and I will leave the link down below to actually for you to download it. So basically you download it, print it out on A4 paper at 100% and then use that template to cut out these eyes and nose section. Um, basically what I do is I get the shape of it on the face which is what I was doing there um, and I line up the two eyes with either side of the top of the nose and then taking the pupil and the eye, I'm literally just stitching a center section on. Positioning it again, and this time what I'm gonna do is I'm whip stitching the eye in place. So whip stitching it all the way around in place. I find that I like to use the black embroidery thread just to give the eye a little pupil. So literally it's just a few stitches over on top of each other to create that little black pupil in the center of the eye. Okay. Then we work onto the nose. Again, as long as the edge of the eye and the edge of the nose are lined up um, and then whip stitching the nose all the way around. checking to make sure that the eye is lined up. Sometimes when you're working with soft fabric and felt it can move so I'm forever positioning it as I'm going along. Right there and once we get to the center section what I want to do is I want to make the mouth the lion's mouth. So judging exactly the center section just pinching it out you can thread the needle and go under the nose and pop it at the front. This is always happening because I use thread that's a little bit too long, but that's because I like to get the whole thing done in one go, um, if at all possible. So at this point now what I'm doing is I'm doing a back stitch. And it's a long back stitch, so it's just one long stitch and it's making the centre section to the base of the nose, which will lead then into the mouth. Okay. Right. Now I've done about seven or eight back stitches, so they're quite um, they're, they're, there's space in between them. What I like to do is then is to run the needle around the back stitch, um, working the stitch around it so as it keeps them all together and it gives a very defined line. 
and then I'm just working two back stitches on either side out to create a smiley face. And I'm working back up the nose, out the side, and snipping off the thread. Okay, so that's basically the mouth, the eye, and that's the second eye on by the magic of camera. The second eye just pops up there. Right now the next thing we're going to do is I'm going to be making the two arms. So starting with the needle thread, double threaded, double line of thread on the, knee, on the needle and a knot at the end. Um, I basically am working stitches in and out and it's a back stitch. Back stitching all the way down to soft sculpt essentially the lion's arms into place. I usually go down roughly about two stripes and then once I've gone down I go all the way back up again with the back stitch and I secure it at the back with a couple of back stitches over each other. Outside and snip off. Right now and I'm going to repeat that on the second arm and that's it completed. So you've got your legs, arms, head, face, ears. Now I just want to fill in the little lines, toes, and these are simply back stitches. Now I didn't use um, a knot on this. I just thread it in the, I pulled the needle in and then left some of the thread inside the leg and then continued with the back stitch. And basically it's just three little toes that are at the bottom of each of his feet. Back stitched in place. Now, as we're going through this tutorial, if there's any questions you have, just leave them in the comments below. Now, next up, what we have is I'm going to make the lion's mane. And the, I've actually got it in, the, in the, the list below, the size of cardboard you need to actually create this. But what I've actually used here is on the actual yarn that I got, there was actually the, you know, the, the band that holds it in place. So I opened up the band, and that happened to just be the right amount of right length and width that I wanted. So what I do is I wrap it around making sure it's good and tight, pinning both sides and then using needle and thread with a knot at the end I stitch all the way along. Now making sure that I go through every single strand of yarn because I want them all to be connected together. Okay so all the way to the end take out the pins and then on the other side what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the scissors and I'm going to cut it. So that basically cuts it in half. Right, and that's for the main. So cutting it in half. And you can see there it's the band, it's the strip for the yarn that I initially had. Okay, and that is the main made. And you see every single piece is, is actually attached together. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to, working from just underneath the lion's um, face, his nose face area, I'm going to I wrap it all the way around. Now this is can be a bit niggly so just take your time with it. And then what I'm doing here is instead of using small pins, I like to use these pins with the bigger tops on because this sock material is quite soft so I don't want the, the pin to just disappear into it. So I pinned the two at the base and then two at the back of the head. And that should hold the mane securely while you go to stitch it in. Right, so needle and thread with the knot at the end, starting at the back and you're going to be whip stitching this in. Again, I like to make sure that I, that I I catch every piece of yarn as I'm doing this, just so as that you don't have any loose pieces of yarn that might pop out later. Working the way around. Again, just maneuvering it. I find that I had to maneuver the mane as I was going around, just so as that I was getting it in the right position.
as I've said, any questions that you have, if you pop them in the comments box below. And I will also leave the list of materials, tools, pattern links, and stitch links in the box below. Um, it'll also be available on our website. I'll also leave that link below too. Lots of links. Right, so almost ready here. few back stitches just for security to keep it in place and snipping off the thread. So that's the main in place. Now the last thing that needs to be done is the tail. So on this piece of card it's five centimeters by four centimeters um, and what I've done is I've wrapped the yarn around it four times. Now this is for the little tufty bit for the tail. And um, again at the very top of this I'm going to do a few stitches just to make sure that all of the, um, the yarn pieces stay together when I snip them at the other end. Perfect, so that's that done. And then to make sure that I have it all secure, I do another couple of stitches. And this is the final section is the tail. So I like to just figure out exactly where I'm gonna get it and then lining them up together, stitch that in place. popping it up and I'm going to roll the tail, roll the fabric inside itself. So it will give the tail substance um, rather than stuffing it. So basically rolling it in and whip stitching it closed. Again, this takes a little bit of manoeuvring, so take your time with it. So, and finally, what I like to do just on the tail section is because it's the chunky yarn, it's, it's, it's got strands of yarn wrapped together. So I like to loosen them out so that you get that fluffier effect for the base of the tail. Um, so that's them all loosened out. And, and just to, I also like to trim it. Now I will also probably be trimming the mane as well. I just, just to make sure that everything's nice and even. Um, so that's the fluffy end of the tail. And I usually just position it just below the arms just below the arms in the center of the back and needle again working with the knot at the end and what I do is I stitch it up so that the whole base all is stitched together and then popped inside. When I pop it inside then I just hold it in position and whip stitch all the way around so the tail is whip stitched onto the back. almost complete. I like to give it just one look over to see if there's any stitching that's loose, trim off any of the mane, um, any sections that might be smaller or you know a bit more jagged. Take them all off, that's it completed. Oh, and so that is the sock line. I do hope you enjoyed this video and if you like this video uh, please give it a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button below and click on the notification bell.